Hey guys, my name is Tom, and in this video I wanted to share a bit more about me, how I learned to code, and the various projects I've worked on over the years. My journey as a developer began when I was 12. I loved the idea of being able to build my own worlds, which is why I enjoyed playing Minecraft so much at the time. I also knew that games like Minecraft were built by people, and that they used mysterious programming languages to do so. Programming seemed like a foreign concept to me, which could only be learned and understood by adults, not kids like me. I hadn't been able to find anything on Google, although that's probably just because I wasn't anywhere near as good of a Googler as I am now. However, one day my dad got an email from Khan Academy about something called the Hour of Code. He suggested I give that a shot, and so I did. I spent an hour going through a couple lessons and then doing a little coding challenge. And I was absolutely hooked. This felt like a step up from Minecraft. Even though I was only making the computer draw simple shapes on the screen, I realized that if I learned to code, I could build pretty much any world I wanted. Over the next few months, I completed all of the lessons and challenges in Khan Academy's JavaScript section. They've added more since then, although I never went back and finished those. At that point, I really wanted to be able to write programs that would work outside of the Khan Academy website, but I couldn't really find a way of doing that. Eventually though, I found out about Swift, which was Apple's brand new programming language at the time. I talked my parents into helping me buy a MacBook so I could download Xcode, and pretty soon I found myself copying code line by line from YouTube tutorials. Most of the time I had no idea what I was writing, which really sucked because I'm generally someone who likes to understand how things work. Even though I still wasn't sure what I was doing, I eventually decided to start my own project. Anything I didn't know how to do, I googled. Progress was pretty slow, and the code I wrote was extremely sloppy, but it worked, which was all that mattered to me at the time. At some point during the year that I spent working on that project, I finally made it over what I like to call the programming hump. All of a sudden, things just clicked, and I actually understood why things worked the way they did. Looking back, I was obviously still a noob, but as things made more sense, it also got a little easier. On January 17th, 2016, after over a year of development, I released my first game, Ball is Life, on the iOS App Store. This was a huge accomplishment for me and another one of those moments where it really felt like programming cool stuff was possible despite my age. At the time of recording this video, all of my released games are only available on the iOS app store and they're under my dad's name because I'm still not legally old enough to have my own developer account. I then took some time to fix bugs and make a few improvements before I began working on my next project. On July 17th, 2017, I released Tartarus the Abyss. This time, I had included a shop where you could buy different cosmetics with the in-game currency, which I thought was pretty sweet. About a week later, I also released an update with Game Center support. Gameplay-wise, Tartarus is still my favorite of the three games I've released. Six months later, on December 31st, 2017, I released Rainbow Reaction, which really tests your reaction times and aims to confuse you into tapping the wrong option. At some point in January of 2018, I finally decided that I wanted to make 3D games, and so I jumped into Unity and C Sharp. As if that wasn't enough of a challenge on its own, I figured I might as well go all out and throw multiplayer into the mix as well. After some research, I found some great tutorials by Kevin Kymak, which I used to learn networking, and which my own networking series is largely based off of. With my newfound knowledge, I spent the rest of 2018 working on an aerial combat game, which I named Ventus Flight to the Death. There's a couple different game modes, but I haven't released it yet since I wanted to do that under my own name, which I'll be able to do once I turn 19. Then in January of 2019, I started working on the pirate game which I'm still working on now and have been making devlogs about for the last few months. Click the card in the top right if you want to check those out. So yeah, that's pretty much the story of how I learned to code. I'll leave links down in the description to everything I mentioned in the video, including download links to my three iOS games. If you want to learn to code, do some research about which languages you should learn based on what kind of software you want to build, and then actually get started. Switching to a different language is orders of magnitude easier than learning your first one, so try to pick a language that's somewhat beginner friendly, and don't get caught up in the I need to do more research mentality. Once you've picked a language, use the internet to your advantage and research anything you don't know how to do. Follow some tutorials, but also try working on your own projects because that's where the real progress will happen in your learning. Now before I end this video, I want to make note of something pretty major. Yesterday, on February 14th, 2020, we hit 1000 subscribers, which is a massive milestone. In my goals for 2020 video, I estimated that if my channel continued to grow as it had been, we'd get here at the latest by the middle of May. Danny managed to really toss that prediction out of the window when he gave me a shout out in one of his videos. 
On Thursday evening, I was at around 740 subscribers. On Friday morning, Danny uploaded his video and by the time I turned on my computer, we had passed 1000. Seeing all those notifications was absolutely insane and I can't thank you guys enough for choosing to be a part of this community. One thing about YouTube is that it's very easy to get caught up in the analytics side of things. Sometimes it's easy to forget that subscribers are actual real people, especially as you gain momentum and you can actually see your subscriber count and your views grow. It can also be really hard to visualize those numbers. Obviously, there's YouTubers out there with millions upon millions of subscribers, and compared to that, my 1000 can appear rather small and insignificant. That's why I've decided to try and visualize this. We're going to see what a fleet of 1000 pirate ships looks like. I'm a little skeptical about whether or not my computer will actually be able to handle that, but I guess we'll find out. I made the ships spawn in a nice grid, turned off the distance fog to make sure we can actually see them, and built the game. And there we have it. The client actually isn't running too bad. It's choppy, but not unusable. Additionally, recording my screen isn't helping the frame rate, so there's that to consider. Unfortunately, the ships don't actually float on the water. I think that's because the UDP socket is being overloaded, which means all the position updates are getting lost, and so the client doesn't know where to move the ships. Honestly, with the ships all just sitting there, it looks relatively unimpressive, not nearly as cool as it looked in my head. However, I think that despite it not quite meeting my coolness expectations, seeing the number 1000 visualized like this really helps put things into perspective. It often doesn't seem like it, but in reality it is a huge number, and to think that this many people enjoy watching my content enough to subscribe is absolutely mind-boggling. The poor server is really having trouble keeping up, so I'm going to put it out of its misery and shut this down for now. Once again, thank you to Danny for the shoutout, and thank you to everyone who's watched my videos, subscribed, and supported me. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and let me know how you learned to code in the comments below. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, and consider hitting the notification bell so you always know when I upload a new video. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.